What's up everyone, Gio over here and today is vlog day. Now I'm up in the North End, this is where I started my career, I love it up here. We're gonna be teaming up with Officer Washington, the beat officer of Little Haiti. He actually has a twin, so hopefully he's around as well and we can catch up with the two of them. But we're under the sun and it is so hot. This summer down here has been crazy hot. Just setting up the camera, I'm already starting to sweat. So I'm gonna call him over so I can jump in the car with him. But before I do so, put on the mask and get out of this crazy heat. All right, guys, let's go do it. Let's spend the day in Little Haiti. What's up, man? Hey, we got dispatch to a call. We gotta go right now. Still dealing with the COVID-19. A lot of our officers has already experienced interactions with the public that were positive. As a result, they have contracted COVID. We have at least 30 officers that have it and there's over 100 that are quarantined. So the city has made it a point that we have our personal protective gear. We have these masks that they've issued us and it comes with a filter. Okay. We're about to park, so I'm gonna take my seatbelt off and get ready to get out the car. Twelve to Bravo arrival. Okay. Okay. Alright, what's going on? Oh, behind. Alright, so the car, the stolen car just passed by us right now. And there he goes. He's coming around. Yo, 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 stop the car. Yo, get out, get out. Stop the car. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Yo, yo. I got it, I got it. I'm crazy. Come on, look. Who's family is that? Hey, whose family is that? Oh, my God. He's got a mental condition? Yeah, 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 yeah. Stop, stop, stop. Stop, stop. He's a dirty man. Okay, okay, he's autistic. He's autistic. He's autistic. I'm the charge of all the game, but that's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good Mommy, I'm sure you one subject to change. Six months ago? Does he live here with you? Where does he live? Who, like, who takes care of him? He's still eating with his daughter. He's still eating with his daughter. Okay. Yeah, that's going to be a 56. It's the guy's cousin who, who took the car and he said he was charging the alternator. And as I pull up, he comes whooping around the block and driving up and down the street trying to get him out of the car. So he says he hasn't taken his medicine six months. He don't want to press charges, so I'm just going to take You suffer from mental health? Hell, f no, I take Oxycontin. I take Oxycontin. I take Oxycontin. I don't know who the f is. I take Oxycontin. I'm going to knock him off, knock him off, knock him off. Um, you know, he does suffer from mental health, so instead of arresting him for, for taking the car, because we got it back, you know, he, the cousin didn't want to press charges. So we're just gonna go ahead and Baker Act him. You know, he, he meets the criteria for a Baker Act. You know, he can't determine himself if he, you know, he needs medical evaluation. Um, you know, without treatment, you know, he poses a threat to himself and others around him. All right, so I had to switch out masks because this particular one that I had on, I couldn't speak with it. I was uh, unable to, to breathe uh, easily. Now, when you're dealing with a Baker Act situation like this, it's very good that we have the family members here so we can speak to them, get a little bit of history of his background, and knowing that he hasn't taken his medicine for six months and is in danger of driving around, going against traffic, that's enough reason for us to Baker Act him. We're gonna take him over the crisis. Officer Washington finished up his paperwork on the computer, so we're gonna go right now and handle that situation and let him get the proper care that he needs.
Stanley, Stanley, calm down, man. We almost there. We almost there. Twelve two and Bravo. I'm out of crisis. Since we're here at Crisis, see that sign right there? No firearms, no weapons, so that means we have to take all our weapons, lock them in the trunk before we take the, the individual inside. So I also have Officer Mack over here. He was the Dispatch 15, the backup officer. That's the additional level of safety that we want to have to make sure that if anything happens, we have another officer here present to make sure that everything goes smoothly. One. Make sure you get your guns back. You don't want to show up to a call without your firearm. Yeah. So I'm from Savannah, Georgia. I traveled down here to Miami because Miami is, is a big place of opportunity. Um, got a drug use problem, seeking for help. Um, very dope artist. Um, trying to get into a shelter and these, and these officers right here, I stopped them and I told them that actually I need help. And they went all out their way, they stopped. They said, young man, we, we, we gonna help you. We gonna go all out, out, out their way. Um, the moral of my story is this, don't give up, because guess what, I could've gave up. I could've just said, nah, I'm not gonna go to the police. Like the people always give police a, a bad reputation. It's not all the police. A lot of a, a lot of people got to have their power structure in life. You know what I'm saying? And this right here, what I'm standing in front of, is the power structure. These people actually is helping people out here on the street. This is what we do as police officers. We try to help people. Now, Terrence is down here from Savannah. He doesn't have a support system, but you know what? We're going to be the support system. Not just the police, but you guys as well. You see his artwork. He has great artwork, lots of talent. He's getting himself rehabilitated. I'm giving him my Instagram account. So once he is out of the, once he's out of the situation he's in now and he's back up and running, he's gonna reach out to me. So if anybody sees his work, is in the business, and wants to reach out and hire him or help him, reach out to my Instagram so I can connect the two of you guys. Let's give him a helping hand and let's all work together. All right, guys, what's going on? Uh, looks like uh, we're in luck. Uh, they're calling upstairs. I have some money that can get them in and get them a bed. So we're just waiting it for them to come down to, to get them in. How does the go about getting a bed? Okay. All right, and now they walk in. You see that? You see that? There we go. We're still out here waiting to speak to a director. We want to get a hold of somebody to see if there's any other numbers or anything, you know, additional in terms of resources that can be provided to help this gentleman. So the director just called and said, take him. Cool. Okay. okay. Right. We'll be back in just a minute. We'll take care of the have a good one. Thank you, bro. Be safe, all right? Hey, we'll see you on the other side, man, all right? Yeah. All right, guys, give us a rundown, man. Debrief, what happened or why did it take so long to get him in there? After several phone calls, checking with our dispatch, seeing if there are any beds available, we were finally able to get the director on the line. 
to um, assist us and go ahead and get the gentleman a um, bed space. It took a um, little frustration from the employees here. We don't know if they weren't sure of the exact amount or what their system is, but even though we kept trying and we were consistent and we were going to get these gentlemen to the bed space, we were able to do so. They were finally able to assist us and he's going to have a bed tonight. So we don't know the reason behind the scenes why the employee was telling us that there was no space available, but we're very happy that the director mm -hmm. was able to get an accurate count and we got him in there. Uh, yes. So for you guys who are going to become cops or rookies that have never experienced this, sometimes you need to go a little step beyond, get a hold of the director because sometimes there's miscommunications in-house and if you want to help somebody, you need to go in person, don't just call, go in person and try to get them the help that they need. Exactly. So the day has been non-stop since I got here. We're gonna go back to the north end. We're out of our zone, we're in central. We gotta go back to where we're assigned and uh, get back in service and see what's happening. 12, 10, bro. So she, you know, we stopped her. She has an expired tag. You know, it's it's been expired for almost four months now. So it doesn't seem like she has the intention to get it fixed. So I'm gonna write her the ticket for it. You know, if she gets it fixed before she takes it to court, we can go ahead and dismiss it. You know, that she's in compliance with with the law now. Okay, I wrote you one ticket for the expired tag, okay? So this is an appointment violation, so there's, you have an option to take care of the, the violation before you have to pay for the ticket. So if you get the, the car registered and valid before you go to court, you won't have to pay anything, okay? So what you're gonna do is you have 30 days to make a decision. You're gonna call this number on the front, and give them your ticket number right here. Let them know one of three options that you choose inside. If you wanna get it fixed, go ahead and set it for court, and just make sure that it's fixed before the court date. Okay, if you have any questions, just call the number here and follow the instructions. Okay, you have any questions? Alright, drive safe, okay? See you later, buddy. So since the day has started, it's been non-stop. It's been back to back to back. I honestly forgot to introduce you guys to Washington properly, so Let's pull over and give him a proper introduction, let you guys get to know him. What's up guys, I'm Washington, I'm a beat officer here in Little Haiti. I've been with the city of Miami for going on six years now. I've been here in Little Haiti for going on three. So Washington, give us a little more background of yourself. I know you were one of the officers that had a viral video during the protest. Tell us what happened there also. So a little bit of background for me, um, you know, I'm a black male, obviously. You know, I come from a family where my two parents were divorced. You know, I'm a white stepmom, white little brother, I have mixed sisters. So I understand the, the issue, you know, full circle. Um, at, at the end of the day, you know, we went out to go do a job, you know, while we were affecting an arrest, and I ended up getting hit with the skateboard in the head. You know, I suffered a pretty bad concussion. I was out for three weeks. So his role during the protest, you know, he has to follow orders. If he has to make an arrest, he's going to make an arrest, you know. And that's what he had to do. They were vandalizing some statues, right? Yep, and we got told that we were, we were to go to make an arrest. Uh, you know, we deployed out. We went to go make the arrest. And in that process, we ended up getting into, you know, a pretty good scuffle. Now, I want to touch base on the structure of police. Everything is top down. Our orders are from top down. So if an officer is out there making arrest during a protest or whatever, usually it's, they've it's, been given the yeah, command. It's coming down from, from upstairs. Exactly. So that's what happened on yours right. was that, hey, some people were doing some criminal activity. They were vandalizing statues. They were in the street and the order was given for them to take action. And when they did, that's when you guys engaged. That's when we got in, uh, you know, in a big incident you know, right in the middle of Biscayne Boulevard. Exactly, so if you're a police officer or you wanna be a police officer, understand that these are things you're gonna to have to deal with. Whether society loves you or hates you, it really is not up to you to have any kind of uh, feelings or emotions towards that. Your job is to come to work to do a good job, to be understanding of the community and what's happening, but also to enforce the laws when you need to, exercise care and compassion as well, and use some good common sense. 
we know what's right we know what's wrong at the end of the day we're still here to do a good job love us or hate us we're here to help and we're here to serve the community so for the officers that are currently out there you know pick up your heads and keep moving forward and keep doing the right thing because we're still getting called for help which means that they need us and we need to provide a very good service the same type of service we will provide to our families and to our friends so aside from the protesting that was going on in june that pretty much dominated all of the media i feel very bad that our lgbtq plus community hasn't been given enough attention so i'm going to send it over to vanessa gonzalez she's our lgbtq liaison and give you guys a little bit of a rundown on what pride month is and what it means to her and all the members in that community hey what's up everyone remember me from the last vlog i'm the lgbtq plus liaison vanessa gonzalez so let's talk about pride month as we know the month of june celebrates the lgbtq plus community 51 years ago, the Stonewall Riots sparked the beginning of the yearly marches and celebrations to uplift the LGBTQ plus voices, rights, and culture. The month is not just a celebration, it is the continuing efforts to have equal rights for the LGBTQ plus community. As a result of this movement, last month the Supreme Court ruled that a 1964 civil rights law protects LGBTQ plus workers from discrimination. While we've come a long way, we still got a long way to go. Thank you for your support, and we will continue to do our part to bridge the gap between the community and the department. So that was very informative. We appreciate that. And for everybody who was celebrating Pride as well, hey, keep celebrating all year because you guys are special and we support you guys very, very much. Now, one thing I received that I have to open up here on camera was a very special package from Germany. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I did open it up earlier and I checked it out. And I was like, man, this is so cool that I actually have to share this, even though it's not a traditional mail time. But I got to share what I got over here from Germany from one of our fans, Chris. He is in a very, very, very cool band called the Jenglers. He wrote me a letter saying, hey, Gio, how's it going, brother? He gave me words of encouragement, thanking me for everything I've done, thanking all the police officers for what we're doing, and he went ahead and sent me a really, really cool CD. I actually looked them up on Apple Music and heard all their songs and loved it. So if you guys wanna check them out, definitely go check out The Janglers online, link below, and show him some love and support too. He's a paramedic out in Germany. He's, you know, doing what he has to do also, and he sent a really cool patch from one of his friends at a German police. Chris, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And you guys, you know, definitely go check him out online. I'm gonna give his Instagram out and listen to his music. It's the first time someone's ever sent me a CD and I'm very grateful for it. And I wanna share it with you guys as well. If you can check it out, definitely listen to it. It's some good stuff. All right, guys, so this might be the last time I'm doing a vlog. No, not permanently. I'm still in the unit, but I'm having a baby. Actually, I'm not gonna have a baby. My fiance is, so. If you don't see me, it's because I'm over there with the little one, and I'll catch you guys when I get back. So please, with that being said, don't forget to like, like share, share, and subscribe. subscribe. Have a good one.